Together with the Supremes, this group defined the staff side of the 1960s Motown sound. Their biggest hit remains among one of the most popular and adoring dance records of the era. This group is widely regarded as one of Motown's most successful female groups of all time. The topic of today's video is Martha Reeves and the Vandellas. Before we get started in today's video, let's be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, and push that notification bell to be sure you won't miss out on any more uploads. Now without further ado, let's cue that intro. Rosalind Ashford and Annette Beard initially met when a local music manager engaged them to be members of a female group called the Delphins. Ashford, Beard, and lead vocalist Gloria Williams of the group have played at local clubs, private gatherings, church fundraisers, YMCA events, and school activities. Maxine Powell coached the group at the Detroit Ferris Center. The group's first professional gig came where they would provide background vocals for vocalist Mike Hanks. The Dell fans in the beginning originally had six members, but was later reduced down to four. When one of the original four members left, Alabama-born vocalist Martha Reeves, who was a former member of the Fascinations and the Saberettes, took her place. Checker Records signed the group to their first recording deal in 1960. The group recorded the song I'll Let You Know, which was led by Reeves. You know Since the song failed to chart, the group was assigned to Checkmate Records, where then they would release the song, There He Is At My Door, which also failed, but this time it was led by Williams. There he is at my door. I just can't Following the failure of these two records, Reese went solo, but she would go under the name Martha Laval, also while still performing with the group. She would go on the solo route in hopes to sign in with the new Detroit label, Motown. When Motown employee Mickey Stevenson spotted Reeves performing at a Detroit bar one day, he was blown away and invited her to audition to the label. Reeves arrived to Hitsville, USA on a Tuesday rather than showing up to a Thursday when auditions were held on a regular basis. Mickey Stevenson was furious with Reeves and appointed her to be his secretary who ironically was in charge of the auditions for the future talent of the label. By 1961, the Vales, as they was known as, began recording background vocals for numerous of Motown performers. The quartet began contributing background vocals on the track Stubborn Kind of Fellow by emerging Motown singer Marvin Gaye. The group's big break came when Mary Wells missed a scheduled recording session due to her illness, so the group, they would take advantage of the chance and they would record a demo of the song called I have to let him go. I'll have to set him free. Even the voices of the group, mainly those that was led by Martha Reeves, had thrilled Motown executives. Gordy immediately gave the group a contract under one condition, and that that would change their names. The group accepted, and there on out, that was known as the Vandellas. Williams departed the group because she thought the industry was too righteous. And from that day forward, the group remained a trio. In an interview with the History Makers, Ashford insisted that the group name did not come after Della Reese and that Reese didn't name the group. In 1962, the group signed to the Gordy Imprint, where they struck gold with the label's most famous writing team, Holland Doja at Holland. This single was Come and Get These Memories. Here's your old friendship ring. I can't wait. On June 28, 1963, the group released a debut album under the same name, Come and Get These Memories. Later that same year, the group released two singles with Heat Wave. <laughs> And quicksand. Quicksand, quicksand, 
September 30th, 1963, the group released their second album titled Heat Wave, which peaked at 125 on the Billboard 200 charts. Annette Beard became pregnant with her first child and was set to get married, so she chose to leave the music industry behind. By 1964, Betty Kelly, former member of the Velvetettes, was brought in shortly afterwards. That same year was a great year for the group as they released four charted singles with Live Wire, In My Lonely Room, Dancing in the Street, and Wild One. Later that year, the group's third album was released called Dance Party, which peaked at 139 on the Billboard 200 charts. By the mid-60s, the group underwent a name change as they went under the name Martha and the Vandellas, and then later to Martha Rees and the Vandellas. Now around this period, it was highly usual for labels to place the lead singer or the star member name before the group so that the label could charge extra for their live performances because technically the audience was getting two acts they was getting the star performer and then the group in 1965 the trio issued two additional singles with nowhere to run nowhere to run to baby nowhere to hide and you've been in love too long The next year, on November 16th, 1966, the group released its fourth album titled Watch Out, which peaked at 116 on the Billboard 200 charts. This album had three hit singles with What Am I Going To Do Without Your Love? I see my tears stained face, yeah, yeah, when I I'm Ready For Love. First time I feel alone in life, as I watch the and Jimmy Mack. group's success kept them on the map as a top act on the label. Because the group's popularity was so high, the group had been featured on shows such as The Ed Sullivan Show, The Mike Douglas Show, American Bandstand, and Shindig, to name a few. Around this time, the Vandellas had became one of Motown's most popular performance group of the label. Now, following the departures of Mickey Stevenson in 1967, in Holland Doja Holland in 1968, the group, like many others, struggled to achieve success. The group was able to strike some success with writer and producer Richard Morris with his singles Love Bug, Leave My Heart Alone. Spring is here and like a way would freeze the love and Honey Child. Shipless and you're lazy, just like that hound dog day. The summer of 1968, the group joined the Supremes, the Temptations, the Four Tops, and Marvin Gaye at performing at, at the Coca Cabana. The label began to transform that same year when Gordy made Diana Ross the face of the label and began focusing solely on her career. As a result of this shift, the group charts performance began to wind down. All of Motown performers took a hit except Marvin Gaye. The Temptations and Stevie Wonder. In this situation, this was not the only reason why the group chart success started to decline. Along with losing the key songwriters, the group chemistry began to deteriorate. Ke Kelly was fired from the group in 1967 after skipping numerous of gigs and getting into various arguments with Reeves. One of these confrontations erupted on stage, which was the final straw and she was replaced by Reed's sister, Lois. By 1969, Ashford had left the group and was replaced by Sandra Tilly, another Vevel X member. Now with this lineup, the group released several albums and charted singles. In 1969, they released the album, Sugar and Spice. In 1970, they released the album, National Resources. And in 1972, they released the album, Black Magic, which peaked at 146 on the Billboard 200 charts. And they had many charted singles during this era with Taking My Love. Baby, my heart was so I Should Be Proud. I was under the dryer when the telegram came. 
I gotta let you go. Boy, you've heard before the very last time. You can bet it. And bless you. Sandra Telly left the show business in 1972 and would later pass in 1983 at the age of 37 of a brain aneurysm. Original member Gloria Williams passed away in 2000. Reeves, Beard, and Ashford reunited in 1978 for a charity concert for Will Gear in Los Angeles. In 1983, Reeves successfully sued Motown for her royalties for when the group was renamed Martha Reeves and the Vandellas. Later on, Ashford and Beard soon followed suit. As of this recording, there are two distinct groups. The first is called the Original Vandellas, which featured Ashford, Beard, and Rochelle Lafon. While Reeves, together with her sisters, Lois and Daphne, performed as Martha Reeves and the Vandellas. In 1995, the group was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame, as well as a vocal group Hall of Fame in 2003. Please, 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 let me know in the comment section below if you would love to see an individual video on Martha Reeves' life and career. Also, after the Supremes, who do you believe is Motown's best female group? 